Here's a look at the 1995 Wizard lawnmower that I converted to radio control in 1996. This is 2019 and I did mow my yard with it and it does a really good job but as you can hear uh, the engine is getting pretty weak so rather than put more money into a 24 year old lawnmower I decided I would go ahead and purchase a new mower. I bought a Mustang 54 inch deck, it's a Troy built and I've done some modifying to it already and have a few other things planned but this video is going to cover the seat and what I did was took the factory seat off and added a suspension seat now this suspension seat is a gravely seat uh, it's a pretty expensive seat but it definitely has uh, some features that I like now I'm not going to be mowing where I'm on an incline or going to put myself in a situation where this thing's going to want to roll over so what I'm going to do in this video is show you how I went about hooking up the two wire seat switch to my four wire Troy built seat switch system so that I do not disable any of the safety features on the mower now I did add a couple of relays and that's the key so what we first have to do is understand the system. I've been using it now for almost a month and I've mowed uh, three times with the system and it's worked flawlessly. So uh, all my safety features work. I haven't disabled anything. And uh, so I thought it was important to share this because a lot of times people find it more convenient to just disable things than, than to um, try to find a workaround that uh, doesn't disable the safety features so with all that said let's take a close look at my switch this happens to be the factory switch that is on my 2018 mustang you notice that it has four pins and two of those pins have an nc stamped on them which stands for normally closed that means whenever no one is sitting in the seat the the connections are closed and it's not necessarily closed between those two pins so what you have to do is take a meter and press the switch and check the continuity between the pins and then release the switch and also check continuity between the pins and what I find is the two outside pins we'll call them pins 1 and pin 4 they have continuity whenever the switch is not pressed but as soon as you press the switch then they no longer have continuity also pin number two and three they have continuity whenever the switch is not pressed but as soon as you press the switch well then it opens the circuit and therefore there is no more continuity between those pins so basically what I have here is a double pole single throw switch meaning that the switch is off whenever you're in the seat and it's on whenever you're not in the seat and yes I said that correctly so what you're thinking right now was hey all I have to do is unplug the switch and I'm good to go however that's not the case because the engineers that developed this system they thought of that as well so what they did was added four clever little tabs that you can see here in this image and these tabs actually make the connection to ground so if we take a closer look at our switch you can see that on the switch there are short little tabs that actually lift up the tabs that are in the connector and so whenever you unplug the switch those tabs that are in that connector are doing exactly the same thing that the switch is doing however whenever you sit on the switch then it's actually disconnecting those connections and whenever you unplug the switch well you're reconnecting those connections unless you isolate those little tabs from the connector pins and I'm going to show you how I do that but I don't recommend you do that unless you're going to add something back and in my case I add two relays which make the connection that the four pin seat switch makes so i'm using a two wire switch to control two relays and each relay 
performs the task of one set of the pins, pins one and four and pins two and three. So whenever there's power supplied to the relay, then it disconnects the connections that is made whenever power is no longer supplied. And on the relays that I'm using, they are five pin relays, meaning that you can have a normally open side on this relay and you can have a normally closed side on the relay. And I'm using a normally closed side. So the only way that the relay is going to disconnect the seat is if power is sent to it. And the only way power gets sent to it is if the relays are energized. And once they are energized, well then they immediately disconnect the connection that's being made. And again, that's done using two relays, one for each circuit, because in reality there's two circuits on this seat switch. So by setting down the two wire switch is activating the relays, which are doing the same thing that the four wire switch is doing that is in the factory seat. However, my Gravely suspension seat only has a two wire switch in it. So in a sense, I'm using the two wire switch to do the function of the four wire switch with the added use of two relays. So in this system, rather than trying to outsmart the engineers, I'm actually trying to work with the engineers because let's face it, the seat safety switches are there for a reason. And if you have this desire to, to disconnect them, I would encourage you to, to do a little research. And once you find out just how dangerous it is uh, whenever you are mowing, and obviously whenever you're mowing, you can't control what other people are doing and you're solely focused on what you're doing, it's very easy for accidents to happen. So I encourage anyone that has thoughts about disarming or bypassing the safety switches on a lawnmower. If you understand how the safety system works, there are ways to keep them active and yet do what it is you want to do. And in my case, I simply wanted to add a suspension seat for more comfort and I did not want to alter the seat by making the hole in it larger to fit the factory switch. So I chose to use the switch that came with the seat and I figured out a way to use the seat. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and do a slideshow of the project. If you're thinking about disabling or overriding the safety system on your lawnmower, it's a whole lot safer to keep those features intact and operational. Thank you for your time and I hope this is helpful.